Our next guest left his job as a derivatives trader at Deutsche Bank to study the link between hormones and risk-taking. John Coates is now a senior research fellow in neuroscience at the University of Cambridge. He's with us from Ottawa this morning. John, uh, you know, this is really where I have to get the interview going. Is there really doping in corporate America? Oh, uh, I don't know about that. We weren't looking at um, the use of anabolic steroids. We were looking at naturally produced steroids, both testosterone and a stress hormone called cortisol. Okay, but uh, people, I mean, my understanding is that people have gone so far as to take synthetic testosterone in an effort to sort of get that edge back, so to speak. I, I've heard rumors of that. Aging CEOs put these um, uh, testosterone gels on their on their back when they feel the the young the the wolves nipping at their heels, and they start wearing black turtlenecks and thinking outside the box. But I, I mean, it's rumor. I, <laughs> All right, it's rumor. I don't know if it's true. Take take us to the place that you know best, at least from your days on Wall Street, the trading floor. What is the relationship between hormones, particularly testosterone, and risk taking? You studied it. What did you find? Well, I was running a trading desk during the dot-com bubble, and it was a time when a lot of people were talking about irrational exuberance. And we've been talking about irrational exuberance ever since Keynes coined the term animal spirits, but no one's ever really figured out what they are. Um, I strongly suspected it was driven by a chemical, and I wanted to find out what that chemical was. Um, because traders during the dot-com bubble, I thought, were acting strange. They were euphoric and delusional. And they were taking too much risk. And the other thing I noticed is that women were relatively unaffected by the bubble. So it seemed to me that there was a chemical involved in irrational exuberance, but it's one that affected men more than women. Um, so I was testing, I went back to Cambridge to test a very um, robust model that's been tested in animal behavior called the winner effect, in which winning um, raises your testosterone levels. That increases your confidence, your appetite for risk, so you take even more risk. And if you get it right again, your testosterone rises even more um, until eventually you become overconfident and take too much risk and risk with bad risk-reward trade-offs because I thought that's exactly what was going on during bubbles. <clears throat> so I went back to Cambridge, as I said, to test this hypothesis, and um, the initial data was very supportive of it. So it, one can almost draw the conclusion that what just <coughs> Don just told us about what's since happened on Wall Street, more women losing their jobs than men, is exactly what shouldn't have happened if men are susceptible to this testosterone high and, and, and increased risk at an alarming rate as a result. If anything, we'd probably want more women on Wall Street taking a more balanced view and being less affected right now, would we not? Yeah, that's exactly the conclusion that came out of it. It, it. We came to the conclusion, and as odd as it may sound, but when it comes to making and losing money, it appears that men are more hormonal than women. Um, so it's a bit of a mystery why women have been cut um, so dramatically from the ranks of the risk takers. And I think one of the reasons for that is that um, the, I mean, Wall Street is determined by both nature and nurture. We've got this biology taking place, which is encouraging um, rapid risk taking. But we've also got an institutional structure in terms of um, risk management and, most importantly, compensation schemes, which really reward people for short-term performance. And I think one of the most important facts to bear in mind in this discussion is that on a trading floor, you might find only 2 or 3 percent women. But when you get up into the asset management firms, the big ones in the city of London, um, you can find up to 50 to 60 percent women. Now, asset management is risk-taking. It's just different risk-taking from trading. In other words, you're, you have a longer period of time to choose your trade, and you sit with it for a longer period of time, and your performance is determined over a longer period of time. I think the sort of frequent um, assessment period on Wall Street means that they're not looking at someone's performance over a five-year period. And if they were to do that, I think they would find that they would naturally want more women on the trading floor. Uh, John, who volunteered for the study that you conducted? I think we'd like to know a little bit about that. Well, it was a trading floor in the city of London, um, and it was, a, you know, a professional trading floor, and we had quite a few volunteers for it because people are very curious to know what's going on inside them, um, and they are very, traders are quite candid people. They, they all recognize that sometimes they become overconfident, and so they, are, they wanted to find out what was driving these, um, these, these bouts of irrational, both risk-taking and risk-aversion.
John, it's some fascinating work, and we encourage you uh, to continue it. And uh, if you find something new, please come back and join us on the Inside Track. John Coates of the University of Cambridge. He studied the relationship between hormones, particularly testosterone, everybody, and risk-taking. You just heard what he found.